one of the things when we look at the startup, the startup world, uh, we always think of the startup culture as, uh, you know, so anti-corporate. A lot of people leave the corporate world uh, and, and think about reinventing themselves or reinventing a service, and they go into a startup while thinking that uh, I, I want to do everything oppositely from corporates. However, there's a lot of the times uh, startups can learn a few things uh, in terms of the processes that the corporate world really does have to offer, amongst a lot of other things. Uh, I'd like to invite on stage the moderator of the next uh, panel discussion, uh, Mr. Khaled Talhouni. Uh, if he can come up to the stage, Mr. Khaled Talhouni. I'm being told. All right, so I, th I think while we're kind of getting things in order for the next step, if we can get the music running, and uh, we'll be back on stage in about 30 seconds with everything uh, up and running. All right. All right, Khaled. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. All right, if you can grab a seat here, we'll get you guys all mic'd up. So talking to us on the panel discussion, uh, corporates and startups, an unexpected partnership. Uh, I'll, like to I'll, I'll leave it to the moderator to introduce the panel discussion. If uh, all of you gentlemen can have a seat, we'll get you the mics right away. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We have an incredibly exciting panel. Uh, we're talking about one of the most critically important facets of the startup ecosystem, which is um, defining and understanding the interplay between corporates on one side and startups on the other. I think a big part of the success of any ecosystem is the ability of these two key stakeholders to be able to drive value together, each needing the other in a different way, in a, in a very interesting symbiotic relationship. Um, the question is though, how do we best optimize that relationship and how do we take that forward? So I'm joined today by uh, an extremely distinguished panel, each coming with a unique uh, dimension to this discussion. And I'd like to take a couple of minutes to allow each of our guests to introduce themselves, uh, starting from my right. So. I'm uh, Tamer Hamid. I lead uh, Procter & Gamble's business for Egypt, Lebanon, Jordan, and Iraq. And uh, I've been with the P&G for 19 years, worked in Geneva, in Cairo, led several types of roles, and we'll talk how those interact or link to business, to Excellent. real world, to startups. Uh, I'm Ayman Isawi, co-founder and COO of D-Squares. Uh, D-Squares is uh, actually uh, the leading loyalty provider uh, in, uh, in the region. Uh, we're operating in uh, Egypt, Jordan, Africa, and the Middle East. And uh, I'm honored that uh, uh, some of the panelists here are our customers already. So we'll be talking Excellent. a lot about this. Yeah. Hi, uh, Wael Abu Laila, um, MD Karim uh, Egypt. Um, I think I'm, I'm blessed uh, uh, being um, uh, exposed to uh, related to the entrepreneurship. I have my entrepreneurship company. Uh, I work for a company which is 100 years old. I work for a company which is 10 years old and now uh, with Karim, which is uh, six years old. So I think um, I'm in the middle between uh, yeah. the startup and uh, the corporate uh, world, which is uh, a bless. Uh, I, I was going to ask you would, you, would you tend more towards being a startup or a corporate at this point? Uh, now I think it's, uh, as Karim, we uh, scale up. Uh, so it's something also in the middle, where you're taking a startup uh, mentality into more the corporate world. So uh, it's kind of uh, in, the, in the middle. Right, so you give us a moderating uh, opinion. Yeah, yeah. I, I, will, I, will, I will help you moderating right. the Excellent. Excellent. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Tamer Musallam. Uh, I'm the Vice President and Managing Director for PepsiCo Food Business in Egypt and uh, North Africa. 
Uh, it's my fifth year to attend that uh, great event and platform for the entrepreneur. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it has been uh, teaching uh, a lot of people a lot of things, uh, good things, and hopefully you will uh, get the best out of it in the coming few days. Uh, thank you very much for inviting us, and uh, it's an honor to be here. Thank you very much for that. To, to kick us off, I'd like to ask the corporates, um, how, how do you, how do you define your objective when it comes to engaging with, um, with startups? What it is that you're looking for? What are you hoping to extract from any engagement with a startup? How does it fit within your overall strategy? I think a lot of startups want to work with you, and I think that much is clear and self-evident. What is less clear, I think, to a lot of entrepreneurs is what do the what do the what do the start what are you looking for? How does this fit within the overall corporate strategy? So, um, so I'm handing over to whoever wants to kind of start off. So. Uh, I think the startups has been growing uh, steadily the past ten years. Uh, it it was the time for corporates and big corporation to realize the added value that the startups can bring to their business and. Uh, not only to their business, but their knowledge as well, because there is a lot of innovations that has been uh, presented uh, from the startups in the past few years are really impressive. Uh, they're not only helping or can help the corporate businesses to grow, but also to bring uh, a great added value to the consumers. And uh, let's remind ourselves all the time that consumers are the boss. Uh, so. Uh, the, that requirement from co different consumer base has been escalating uh, year on year, and accordingly, you have to really uh, admire that and work on it. Uh, PepsiCo has a great uh, strategy uh, globally called uh, the performance with purpose. Big part of that is focusing on individuals, focusing on products. That's why that startups and entrepreneur uh, uh, dynamics uh, mingle very well with our global strategy. In Egypt specifically, we've been working very closely with a lot of startups in different platforms. And I will tell you a couple of them. For example, the solar energy innovations that a lot of startups nowadays are working on it. We've been able to adapt on that and, uh, and turn that to one of the social responsibility initiatives that we have done in Upper Egypt. We took that idea, we've turned it into a very simple business model where we can be uh, uh, helping people uh, to bring electricity and help them to have a better life. Uh, that's one uh, a very simple example where can uh, a startup idea can turn to be a great initiative. The second thing is waste management, for example. Waste management is a great opportunity in Egypt. And uh, there is a lot of initiatives on biodiesel that came up lately on that, uh, on that front. So... A couple of startups are working very closely with us in our plans how to turn the oil into a biodiesel, resell it, uh, help us to really be part of a better environment, recycle part of our raw material, and then again put it back in a different benefit to the society that we're working on. Not only that, but a lot of innovation are coming on the packaging front. So there is a great minds, there is great innovators in the market, where we've used a couple to really come with a couple of initiative in our packaging material or in packaging our brands and put it as a promotion for the consumers. So what I'm trying to tell you that this is one platform where corporates can adapt uh, very uh, simple ideas and turn them to a bigger business model for the startups and entrepreneurs. And on the other front that when startups interact with corporates, and executives and even senior managers within a certain corporation, they learn and, and, and uh, we help them build their capabilities in a way, look into their business model in a different way. Even we can help them in setting the financials, uh, how they can navigate through the difficulties they can face in the, in the market. Of course, Egypt has been through a lot in the past five years uh, from an eco, from an economy point of view. The dynamics are difficult even for the big for the big corporation, so imagine a new startups are trying to navigate all, the, all through the, the perfect storms that the country are going through. Uh, even the individuals within the co corporation, and, and that's a personal example that I want to give you. I, uh, one of my latest hobbies is I started to work with a lot of startups. So I'm sitting on the board 
on a few startups, giving them advice, giving them a little bit of a support, uh, how to raise for funds, how to raise to, for money, how to really think in putting their business case in a different way. So that dynamic between the big corporation, the individuals that leading those businesses, and uh, the, even the middle management is a great thing. So that's why I'm telling you that it should not be only that you adapt business, but also how you can be an added value to those individuals. Sw switching gears quickly to the startups, um, what's, uh, what are you looking to extract strategically beyond just landing another client from the corporates? What are you looking to achieve in building relationships with corporates beyond like just having another corporate if it's like a B2B type of offering? Yeah, I believe um, we have two, uh, two main important milestones for any startup uh, working with a corporate. The, the early stages uh, phase, which is very important for any startup, I think it's, um, it's very uh, crucial to, uh, to have a big account if you manage, to, especially if we're talking about B2B businesses, which is mainly what we are discussing here. So if you manage to start with a big corporate uh, in, in your early stage for your company, that uh, accelerates, uh, accelerates the growth of the company uh, big time. Uh, the second milestone would be uh, when it comes to international expansion. Of course, having uh, a big corporate uh, as, uh, as one of your accounts, that, uh, that makes a big difference. So um, I believe it, it depends on the stage of, uh, of the startup and, uh, and, and how, uh, how uh, everyone is looking at uh, a certain industry within uh, his uh, specialized field. Yeah. Um, I think one of the mo most important thing is the reference. Usually startup look for a reference. And usually in uh, this part of, of, of the region, uh, reference means that you have a big brand in your reference list. Um, the second point would be the uh, stability. When you have a contract with uh, a big corporate, this gives your uh, uh, startup a financial stability, which is a main concern usually in startups. And as uh, uh, I said, we mentioned the uh, international expansion. And I think one, uh, one of the things that uh, we usually look uh, for is learning, learning also from the big uh, corporation about uh, how to do business through processes, governance, and so on. This is uh, uh, it's a learning curve for any startup, how to bid for, uh, for um, a project, how to uh, uh, present uh, your story. Uh, so it's part of, of the on uh, job training with, with Berg uh, Corporation. That will help you expanding uh, the market. I think on the corporate side, um you know, a big part of, presumably a big part of why you engage with, with startups is to transfer some of that innovation inside the organization, right? To bring that in. Um, how easy is it to do that? And have you seen successful examples in your, in, in your history? And, and how do you look to achieve that? Easy or not, no, it's difficult, for sure. But, uh, but we attempt to do it. So, probably answering your question or reflecting on the earlier question, Job number one for us, or objective number one, is we want to add value. So throughout the three days, we have a team from Procter & Gamble that is here. And number one objective for us is to figure out a way where we can add value. So we lead a number of sessions. Hopefully, the attendees will find them beneficial, whether in financial strategy, whether in project management, among others. And through that engagement, we also want to figure out a way where we can get value inside the company, like you're saying. I'm sitting here next to once a startup, and now a very, very beneficial and integrated part of our um, go-to-market, whether on the trade or on the consumer. I'm talking about the partnership with D-Squares. So it exists. Within my organization, to your point, part which is the Lebanon, Jordan, Iraq. That's a $200 million business. We are running it, and that's only starting since less than nine months. I'm in my job just under one and a half years with one five, 15 talents. Wow. 15. Average seniority in the company, 
for those talents is under five years. What we are trying to do is, you know what? We're a giant. I know we, we all hear all the negatives about corporations. But you know what? It's, it's in our hands. I said, okay, that part of my business, let me try to run it with all the benefits of startups. It's dynamic. Its decisions are made weekly. The talents engage directly with me. We have a drum beat. And you know what? The business this year will probably record the best in six years in terms of results. Wow. So, frankly, we want to learn, but we also want to add value. So the Excellent. short answer to your question is we are in the search of a win-win. So those three days, we have a team, big team, here on campus. And when we go back to the office, we want to answer the question, how did we add value and how are we generating business for startups that will benefit us moving forward? Great. And, and finding that win-win, obviously, you know, there are two sides to this, corporates and startups coming at, coming at it with different objectives. What, what, what are the difficulties in reaching the the win-win? Um, I'll give this to, to both sides of the argue, to both sides of the divide. But you know, tell us a bit more about the challenge of reaching that consensus. I think uh, the the first challenge a startup face is the consideration to be, to be considered for for a partnership with the big corporate and to get is, in the door. Just yeah, to get in the door, be just acknowledged, to be just to be invited. And and this is also a culture that I see it personally is moving into the right direction. Such kind of panel and such kind of events is, is the door opening for such uh, uh, startups to be considered. Uh, the second would be uh, reducing the entry barrier. Um, big corporations usually have a lot of uh, terms and conditions to, to do a, a project Related to the financial capabilities, the P&L for the last three years, you have to put an LC of this. I mean, these kind of, of barriers need also to be reduced. This is one of the of the challenges the startup face. Uh, second is, uh, I think, the um, the way of the collection and payment. Uh, big corporation usually have um, kind of uh, processes dealing with partners who has deep pockets. Which is not the case in startup. I cannot, I cannot, as a startup, live without getting paid in in 30 days, not in 90 days. I mean, this is very small things for for big corporation. But when it comes to startup, this is, I mean, life or death for right, for, right. for the startup itself. Right. Yeah, I believe um, uh, getting to your point about the, the win-win situation. Uh, I believe it uh, it starts with the the mindset of the corporate, of course, which Tamer actually mentioned here and this is the mindset that most of the startups are looking for uh, within the corporates that how to um, how actually uh, the understanding of the corporate is that there is a need uh, for startups to solve certain uh, problems and certain issues uh, within the, the, the detailed operations or the day-to-day -day operations of uh, big corporates um, I believe uh, what we have done uh, right and basically talking to entrepreneurs here is uh, a good understanding of how, of how things work within uh, within the corporate uh, requires certain things. Um, just a very important piece of advice for B two B business models specifically would be uh, working for a corporate for a few years for an entrepreneur before starting his uh, startup that added a lot of value. Uh, this uh, brings actually uh, a common ground between uh, uh, corporates and, and startups and the understanding and starting point of doing business is completely different uh, if you know how things work internally. Uh, I think this is a very important point. Uh, in these squares actually uh, the co-founders and, and most of the management team are coming from uh, corporate background, uh, P&G, uh, Pepsi, Vodafone mm -hmm. and so on. So it makes a big difference to, uh, to be able to work with uh, with yeah. the, those corporates, uh, there's a lot of gaps, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of issues, small issues that needs to be solved, and uh, having a good focus from a startup and an entrepreneur in a specific vertical and being the best in it, uh, I think that's a very good entry point for any startup to uh, to do business with big corporates. 
Got it. Yeah. On the corporate side, what, what are the challenges for you on working with startups? You know, as you try to get your organization to engage, what are your hurdles that you have to overcome? Uh, consideration is a great point. Uh, and that question related to consideration as well. But uh, I wouldn't say actually that there is a major challenges, but there is a, a few things that you have to consider from a corporate point of view or from a startup point of view. One of those consideration is the how relevant is the idea to the corporate strategy, for example. So this world, again, that's a great example of how relevant is the idea to the corporate strategy. You need to connect to the consumer. You need to really drive a, a, a kind of engagement level with the consumer with the trade where this query came with a great platform that can deliver on the corporate strategy that will put you directly to the consumer. So that's when, when we talk to how relevant is the idea, how scalable is it as well. Can you take it to the next level? Can you keep really developing the idea until you reach the right level of engagement of those ideas within the corporate so you can reach the win-win? How relevant is the financials, for example? How you deliver a common ground on the financial benefit between a startup in order for them to live, especially that within the startup's environment, the success rate for a startup is very low. Yeah, every 10 companies, for example, or every 10 projects, only two or three survive. So how can the corp corporation or the corporate environment help the startup to survive and also that startup or that idea or innovation can bring uh, a good value, an added value to the corporation. And the last point will be basically how you build their capabilities in order to integrate them within your system. And this is how you guarantee that this project will survive, this startup will scale up, and one day will have a great exit. So at that time, you provide a great help to the startup that you're working with. Got it. Um, and in terms of you know, shifting gears a bit to acquisitions, you know, how do you how do the corporates think about acquiring smaller companies? Is that something that you're starting to consider, or is that not on the table yet? How does it fit into your strategy? Each company would have its own set of uh, strategies and and objectives with regard to acquisitions. In Egypt, for PNG, most important is a fit of the idea. Today, it's not on the table that we would acquire a small company. In fact, what is on the table is how can we generate a wider range of partners? If there is a small company, if there is a startup where we can play a role to get them on their foot and running, then you know what? It's payback to the community. But the short answer is today, it's not among our objectives to acquire other companies. Okay. Similar with PepsiCo? I think uh, uh, a big corporation is always guided by the global strategies. However, I still see this, those opportunities happening uh, on the local front. So there is a lot of the private sector companies that make a half a billion of revenue or a 200 million uh, Egyptian pound of revenue. I, I mean that a big size are fetching for acquisitions. And this happened with Fauri, for example. Fauri started as a startup. Right, yeah. They did great. Uh, now they're coming to a multi-million revenue company, and they've been putting money into a smaller companies as well. So, and many examples of that. So I can see acquisition happening, especially in an evolving economy like ours. We still have a great opportunities for acquisitions to happen. And this is what I exactly meant by an exit. For a startup to exit, you have to firm up your business plan, you have to firm up your revenue stream, you have to make sure that you have the right build-up strategy in order, in order for one day to be acquired by a private sector, maybe a multinational that has the flexibility to do that. And believe it or not, for PepsiCo, we've done several ac acquisitions across the world in, in, in that front. So, is it possible to happen? Of course, it's possible to happen. Um, I think in, in Karim, um, this is the mentality that uh, we're scouting for uh, ideas. Um, if it uh, make a lot of sense to buy uh, something that will add to the technology or to the platform, uh, it will happen. So uh, we're, we're open. 
uh, I think um, the last three months witnessed the acquisition of a small company in India that is helping uh, uh, Karim in developing the, the bus uh, application. Right. Yeah. So uh, this is the on the radar screen to uh, scout for new opportunity uh, mm. as long as the technology is there and, uh, and this will, uh, will benefit. And you acquired people. round menu, right? Yeah, yeah for I mean, to help your food uh, business. Yeah, yeah, for the round menu for the food. So, um, and even if it's a smaller uh, company than round menu, if the technology is there and this will add to the platform, we will uh, be considering. Great. I think lastly, I'd like to ask the panel to kind of share with the audience of entrepreneurs, uh, what what is the main what would be the top advice they'd give them as to how to build successful relationships with corporates? I think starting with D-squared, because you've had a great uh, track record doing that. So I'd love to hear you know, what, what advice you'd give other entrepreneurs in the audience. Yeah, I believe um, talking to entrepreneurs here, um, uh, a very important thing is, um, as I said in the, in the previous question, uh, understanding the value chain within the corporate is, um, is a very important factor, how things work internally uh, in the day-to-day -day operations. Uh, two things, I believe, are always the intersection of, uh, of what corporates are looking for uh, within startups, which is uh, the fast pace and agility. So uh, corporates are always looking for startups to solve uh, the problems of uh, big enterprises or big corporates or how to make things uh, faster, how to make things uh, more uh, flexible or agile, uh, and, and finally, uh, with an efficient uh, quality of service. So if, uh, if an entrepreneur believes he can actually focus on those uh, three uh, lines in a specific vertical, as I said, uh, there is a lot to be done. Uh, a lot of opportunities is still there within the corporates. We can see it. Uh, we've been there for the past seven years, working started with Vodafone, going uh, along with other mobile operators within, uh, within the region, uh, FMCGs as well, Pepsi and uh, PNG, uh, the banking sector. So those kind of big corporates, uh, there is a lot, of, uh, a lot of things to be done just uh, a good understanding of how things work internally and choose uh, just one specific line, start with a, a simple uh, idea, start with something small that matches uh, your scale as a startup, and then, as Temer mentioned, uh, the scale-up uh, period or the scale-up uh, time will come because what we have seen actually with corporates that if, if, uh, if both sides believe that the values are the same and uh, the entrepreneur or the startup uh, has a good understanding of their business, what happens is uh, they give them the trust and, uh, and they are confident to uh, scale up the business with them and increase their business with them uh, going forward. Excellent. Thank you very much. I think that's uh, all the time that we have. Um, I want to I'd like to kind of thank, uh, thank our guests for joining us today. Thank you very much for taking the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to see if there's, a, I think we have time for one question from the audience, if we have at least one yeah. question. Any questions? Somebody was raising their hand, but apparently they're taking a selfie. Okay. <laughs> no questions then. All right. So oh, we got a question over there. Not taking a selfie, but actually taking <laughs> uh, Can you please stand up? The mic will come to you. I, I actually need the mic. Thanks. Uh, okay, uh, thanks a lot for the great session, first of all. It's very insightful. A uh, question I had on the, like the concept of corporations, big corporates partnering with startups question to corporates what would why or like what are the decision factors or the criteria that you would look at and think that I would go for the startup fixing that or providing the solution versus you leveraging on like scale and know-how and everything and doing it yourself as like PNG or Pepsi etc or I go ahead I think uh, uh, it's a great question we've touched based on that as we got the questions, however, the relevancy of the idea is, is the base of everything. And then how you scale it up. And that's why in our 
يعني PepsiCo have done something in the past two years where we gave a brief for startups and entrepreneur on product innovation, for example. So we we have that been going, that kind of activity going in the past two years, where we give a brief for a lot of startups to deliver ideas. How can we innovate on our products and provide ideas that can take us to a healthy, healthier proposition to consumers? And that was a very specific brief given to startups in order for them to adjust their ideas to tolerate to our strategy when it comes to delivering on the product innovation. So that's more or less the, the, the dialogue that ha should happen between the startup and cooperation. Maybe you have an idea that touch on that brief, so you come in and you present it. However, we keep working together until we refine the idea to deliver on the intent of the brief and intent of the strategy of the cooperation as well. On, uh, on this one, first of all, we have to admit it, and you need to know it, we cannot do everything in-house. We cannot do it all. So we really, those three days, and it's for P&G, I envy what uh, Pepsi have been doing for five years. It is our first attempt, and we will continue. We're very much committed to be part of that ecosystem. We have a lot of business vectors where we can see opportunities for startups to partner and create value, and for us to give value back. For you as a startup, if you want to approach PNG, my simple advice is try to be super clear what is the business situation we're trying to solve for versus selling what you are doing. If you, if you really understand well what is our business situation, what is the challenge, I'm sure you'll come up with a smart, fast, cost-efficient solution that we later on can build on, but it needs to come from you. That would be my only advice. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. All right. Can we give them a round of applause? Thank you very much.